Ah, uh, yes. Oh, here we are, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Week two. Last week went fantastic. Now, here we are again. The Brandit Podcast. It's going to be right. a lot of fun. Um, you know, here's what fucked me up. As I said, Brandon, get us a couple shot glasses for the TikTok Live and the podcast episode. Yeah. And you come out with this shit. <laughs> what the fuck? The what antiques? is this? <laughs> Now, went, what the fuck is that? I went to Goodwill with mom. I guarantee you went to Goodwill, bro. <laughs> this is that type of... This is fucked up. This is like the shit the... Uh, I don't know. The, 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 like the shit they used to fucking... I mean, drink. that's not fine, China. That is the finest China. This is the finest China of the trailer park. That's what oh, this dude. is. Yes. So this is what we have. And we're going to take a shot before the episode's over. I feel like this is what fucking Hitler drank out of during the fucking World War II here, bud. So we've got these nice, nice, beautiful shot glasses. Yeah. How you been, bud? How's the week been going? Uh, not too bad. Uh, you know, just you know, typical bullshit at the, at the day job. You know, mm. fucking rake it away, fucking cleaning out cars, sucking up vomit. <laughs> Vomit, fucking dirt, gravel, Buggers. fucking French fries from McDonald's oh, that have God. been there for a week. You know, you know how it goes. I'll man. tell you what, just... we, we we just got back from Nashville, and I think I got something I couldn't shake off. The poops? Yeah, the poops. Mm. I shit. <laughs> I shit so bad in Nashville. Waffle That's right. House fucked me up. And now, ladies, I'm not talking about a, 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 a vaginal disease, but I got some shits. Then yeah, it oh, dude, it, it held us up for an hour. <laughs> it held us up we, for more we, than that. We sat outside in the hotel. And you said, "Hang on, guys, we gotta go back." Uh, that, well, see, that was the thing. I said, "Brandon," I said, "I don't know what to do. I've been shitting. I've been. I sh I woke up. I started shitting, and it was just awful. I shit like seven times. And then I said, Brandon, we gotta we gotta hang out in the parking lot here yeah. at the Bay Mountain Inn. Just give me a few minutes. You know what? I shit twice." And I said, I'm good to go. Then that's bad. Yeah, then we <laughs> ate uh, Mexican food. We ended up right back at the hotel, man. Right fucking back there. I said, hang on, guys, before we go do something. <laughs> but what do you do at that point? To where, like, we, me and you went to Waffle House at 2 a.m. Hey, do you remember the orders that we had? I mean, really what yeah. we ordered? Because it wasn't great. This is not a normal human being's order from Waffle well, it, House. It was impulse intoxicated decisions, to say the least. You had two orders of uh, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Bro, I Are said, you lactose and toddler ants? Because that might have made you piss uh, out your butt. Yeah, I am. Anytime I eat dairy, milk, cheese, um, fucking, mm. you know, whatever it may be, it makes me shit. But we we didn't eat all day. We was on the no, road all didn't. fucking day. No, we, didn't. we drove all the way to Nashville. We didn't eat shit. I mean, Noah ate some nasty gas station egg rolls because fucking Noah's Noah. So he's going to fucking stop. And, you know, we, we pull into the worst gas station within seven hours. And he goes in. He's like, oh, I got me a couple egg rolls. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course you're going to fucking, you know, and then he farts all the way there. He's like, oh, sorry. I, I shit. Mm, but yeah, those burps, mm, a lot. He knows about them too, so he apologizes in advance. Yeah, he'll roll the window down and back. Mm. Sorry, sorry, guys. Burp a lot. just like, but he'll smell it if he doesn't roll it. We we know, we, we, early. we didn't eat all day, and we ended up at the fucking Waffle House, and uh, I ate two biscuits and gravy. Mm. I ate a, a, a hash brown bowl bowl with. Uh, Sausage and cheese on top, and then you had Sorry. pretty sure half of the other menu. I did, <laughs> I did, dude. I got a burger from fucking Waffle House. A burger. I mean, How I was, was fucked. It was actually not bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. But I got that, and then I washed it down with a waffle. Mm. <laughs> it was great. It was exquisite. What? What? My favorite part was whenever you ordered the hamburger. That the, the cook was like setting. He said, "Damn right, <laughs> damn said, right." <laughs> I was, he was like excited to go and cook it for me. I said, <laughs> "All right." He, he he was sitting in the booth next to us, and he had headphones in, but it wasn't like ear pods. It was like the ones with the cord attached to them. 
Oh, yeah. So, like, the old school shit that you, with the aux cord that you fucking plug in. Yep. And, like, he's listening to music, and as soon as you order that hamburger, he goes, fucking hell yeah. <laughs> I felt the freedom in his voice. Was man. it good, though? It was fucking delicious. It wasn't bad. I would, I'd get it again. Would, would you? Yeah. I've eaten Waffle House quite a bit, but that was the only time that it fucked my guts up. And... And if anybody's wondering, you can go watch the vlog on YouTube on the Copenhagen Banana <laughs> channel, and you can see the whole fucking ordeal. Seven pounds yeah, of biscuits and gravy. I don't know why I'm <laughs> shitting, boys. I just... I, <laughs> just ass pit. I said, I got to sit here for a minute. And that's a weird thing, is when you sit in a parking lot, and you're just like, you got the shit, and you just can't go out and do anything. Yeah, it fucking like, ruins your whole day. Yeah, like... Because it's like fucking one thirty on Saturday, and we're sitting in the parking lot, and I'm fucking pissed. And I'm like, hang on, I just, I just need a minute here, uh, to just try to shit. And and Noah, being Noah, it, five minutes would go by, I'd be like, oh, where do you, where do you guys want to go? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? <laughs> I got to shit, bro. I don't know if I can do anything without shitting in public, okay? And I think I got some PTSD. From when I shit my pants in New Orleans in front of my whole family. I mean, here's the thing. When you shit your pants in front of your stepmom, your dad, your best friend for fucking 17 years, and they all stand around you and watch your shit right on Bourbon Street, you know? It fucks you. Yeah. It changes things. It changes a lot. Yeah, it changes it, the dynamic of how you how they see you, how you see them. Right. They're like, you know, they're going to be like, he shit his pants, and you're going to look at them like, I shit my pants. <laughs> exactly. Anytime you're in the household, it's just fucking weird. That's what I feel like, dude. And it's like yeah. when I like when I come home for Christmas, like my dad and my stepmom, everybody looks at me, they're like, I watch you shit. That boy pooped. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking shit. Dude. It was in his Nikes. And it was it was it was in the shoes. And and now when when I'm out, I'm like, I don't want to go out in public and like ever do that again. You know, I don't want to be that fucking guy. Yeah. So I just, I think there's a little p bit of PTSD involved with it, you know. Um, but Nashville was fun all around. We had a good show. A lot of people came out. Um, we we did some things we weren't supposed to do. I took you and in, in Noah to Nashville and on um, Bourbon Street. Sorry, not Nashville, not Bourbon Street. Jesus, now I'm thinking about Broadway. Myself. Broadway Street. So we went to Broadway. What did you and you and know? What was your assessment of Broadway Street? Um. Well, I don't want to get too carried away with it, but no, uh, get carried away with it. That's why we're here. Oh, dude, it was quite the experience. Just the amount of beautiful specimens in that area, and and just compiled in one area. It's just like. My God. <laughs> there is it. And you look at it and you're like, it almost makes you mad because it's like, I can't fucking have that. Well, yeah. You there, know? There isn't one girl on Broadway Street who's not like absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Like, it's like it's like they take Instagram models and they right. just drop them off. Oh, dude, by the bus By loads. the bus loads, yeah. you know? And it's not even about that. Like, it's just, you know, the. I mean, that's a great, that's a plus. I mean, it's awesome. But like the atmosphere that I finally got to experience broadway i'm ready to go back like That's if right. i could go back right now and just spend a week i would hang out during the week on broadway well I'm, I'm upset that we didn't go back the second night because we had the show and then we found some other bar and we tried uh, to go back there but it was it, full of like hipsters mm -hmm. or and it sucked and it kind of killed the vibe so we didn't want to go to broadway <laughs> right right but but the problem with broadway is when i used to go to broadway in nashville they had like i swear to god this is no 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 political shit here but when i went to broadway in the past it seemed like donald trump was the president because it's been like two or three years since i've been um and beers were like four bucks they were at nine, nine fucking dollars nine dollars for bar. a Nickelodeon ultra I can no. buy a fucking 12 pack for fucking what, 20 bucks? No, you can buy it for like 10. Yeah. And, and they're serving beer, $9 beers. And that's really what killed it for me. And I love Nashville. I love the Predators. But here's the deal, guys. Like, if you want people to come down here and fucking party, fucking cut it the fuck out. Like, $9 beers. And then they give you the receipt and they want to tip. And I'm all about tipping people. I'll, right. I'll tip waitresses. I tip Hooter Girls 20 bucks. You know, oh, yeah, I'll fucking, I'll tip ladies. the fuck out of you, but 
after a night, you just serve me a nine dollar beer. <laughs> you think I'm gonna? Yeah, I mean, every time I like, went to go buy one, I, 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 I threw up in my mouth it, it, every it time. I just. It, you know, yeah. I, I got to take out the 401k to hang out. Yeah. But that's why we pregame so hard in the hotel. Well, that is true. We, we had a big, a big stack of truly. And, you know, and, and that's no hate against businesses. No, on Broadway. no. Like, I mean, they, they, they know just, what they're doing. They just have to because inflation. I mean, yeah, they're whatever. paying $30,000 a month in rent to have a bar on Broadway. So, like, I get yeah, it. It's yeah. just like. It sucks it, for us. You it, know, but, it hits a lot. And, you know. Nashville is one of the hardest towns when it comes to comedy or music or anything that you're trying to do. If you try to go to Nashville and, and do a show, it's it's fucking, you know, it, it, it's rough because there's so much going on every night of the week that it's hard to get people out to your show, which we actually sold out. We did have like 65 yeah, people. Yeah, there, it was so all the way to the back. It wasn't bad. But um, Nashville is just one of those towns that... Um, I don't even know, know where I was going with it. it. it Nashville's got its pros and its cons. Man, pros you know? and cons. But it's... but I think the pros outweigh the cons because Nashville, it's just a good, no matter what, it doesn't matter about the prices and all that bullshit. It's such a good atmosphere to be in. Yep. It's, it's nothing but positivity the whole time. And I'm so glad I got to experience that finally for the first time. And Oh, it's not the last time. Yeah, I'm looking We're going forward. Back. I'm looking forward to going back. I mean, I really am. Brandon, where's that blue shit at, bud? Pour us a shot in some of these. Uh, you want a shot? This looks like some shit left over from World War II that fucking uh, yeah, the rena- Hitler took the, from the, the rena- Jews. Son. This part of the I mean, son, this but... shit. This, what are these shot glasses? I mean, I said, Brandon, go find us some shot glasses for the episode, and you come out with this. Yeah, leave it to me. And you bought this nasty blue shit. This is like rubbing alcohol with blue dye in it. It's better than straight of what I was going to buy, so we'll just leave it at that. Straight of what? Monica. What were you going to buy? Vodka. I just want straight up vodka. Yeah. Mm. You're not the vodka kind of guy, though. It makes you mean or something, right? It used to. Yeah. I used to think it did. I don't know what it is that makes me mean now, but there I think it was just mixing. Yeah, a little bit I of can't, Russian in I you? can't mix. Want to go fuck with Siri? Oh, dude, I, I have... Very, very little Russian. Yeah. The, uh, no, it's it's mostly I'm prominently German. Um, well, that part. explains the glasses. I mean, I'm a mutt, but so it's who brought this? To, was this your mom? Did your mom bring you these it, it, glasses? I mean, if mom didn't buy these, I was with her when I got Dude, them just because the I remember mom this? being around when I had these. Just the smell of this, bro. Oh, it's rough. It's a lot. I mean, strap in. This is like what you get. Every time, strap this in. This is what you get pregnant on a fucking pull-out couch with here. Mm-hmm. I've been to some house parties where women never came back the same, and they ended up with like four kids after a one-night stain. Mm-hmm. This is it. Yeah, you can't even do that these days. I didn't want to do it. I just said do it to be cool. <laughs> High school, hell yeah. I hate it. Show them the bottle. What is this shit? What's it even called? I don't know. Should we? Yeah, show them the bottle. Are you sure? Well, yeah. I mean, just read the name off. We don't have to show the logo. It's not like Smirnoff's going to sponsor blue, us. Blue Raspberry Lemonade. Blue Raspberry Lemonade. Smirnoff. Vodka. Good shit. I like it. It gets the job done. Bandit doesn't like it. But can't please everybody. And that's okay. Cheers, Brandon. Fucking done, bro. <laughs> oh god, I fucking hate it. Why do you do that? Oh. oh god. I'm hey. ready to run a triathlon. Ah. You can't run those because that's a bike. Fuck. <laughs> Have you ever ridden a bike, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, have you ever gotten on a bike and ridden? Yes, dude. I used to, hit, I used to hit skate parks with bikes. Really? I used to be a max. Whoa, hang on. Like, <laughs> yeah. hitting ramps and shit. Yeah, yeah. I used to hit whoops and half pipes and. What the fuck is a whoop? A whoop it. You don't know what a whoop is? <laughs> no. What is a whoop? So, like in Supercross, Motocross, Arena Cross, they all have this section called the whoops. And the whoops is where they go over hump, 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 hump. So whenever they're going real fast and their bikes are going, woo, 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 
they're going over the whoops. Woo, 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 woo. They're trying to catch a rhythm in that whoops. They're trying to figure out where the rut is or trying to find a line or where where what's fastest. I'm not the guy to ask about this. I this this is based off of what I've seen from what I've watched, and I've had a couple of buddies that have raced. But the whoops, that's where that little those waves are, those really quick waves. Ram, 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 ram. Ram, 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 ram. That's those are the whoops. So you you did this on a bi- a bicycle? Bicycle, yeah. Yeah, there used to be a skate park in Cedarville. And I'd run there with a buddy that I used to smoke hella fucking pot with. Uh, sorry, Mom. I used to smoke so much fucking weed with when I was a teenager. Yeah, dude. And we'd go to the fucking skate park. I had a fucking... Tw- I mean, it was a... You know, when people do BMX, they have the lightest bike as possible. I had a fucking steel frame <laughs> fucking 30-pound <laughs> fucking unit from Walmart. Oh, dude, shit. Your grandpa used to fucking do, like, some Neil Armstrong shit dude, on. Dude, it was a fucking $100 fucking tank from walmart and I, was, I was hitting the whoops and i was fucking spanking the half pipe Did that have pegs on it um in the back i believe you ever pick up you ever pick up god damn it pick up you ever uh <laughs> you ever pick up bitches on the pegs or what i wish but huh? it was really just my buddy on the back <laughs> so, so so you was you was doing fucking bmx shit at the skate park. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I did a little bit of skating, but I found that I I was able to handle um, BMX a little bit right. better. You tried to skateboard? Yeah, I could do a, do a, maybe a couple tricks, but it was nothing worth saying like, hey, I'm a skater. Right, know? right. I, I yeah. skateboarded back in the day. My dad, he still skates board, skateboards even though he's uh, 40,000 years old. <laughs> um but I used to skate, right? Before, <laughs> yeah, before I was fucking, uh, for, for, you know, 250 pounds. But, um, I just, God damn it. Um, where was I going with this? Um, you used to skate, or your dad used to skate back Dad in the used day. to skate. Uh, we yeah. used to, yeah, I'm fucking, uh, there's no way I could do it now. There's, there's no way. Yeah, I mean, with being uh, because, uh, how um, heavy set we are in the front end, I don't, just, uh, <laughs> I don't dude, really see Can you see imagine that. dropping in at 240 pounds? Of, yeah, it's it going to be, be top a, heavy, and we're going to nosedive <laughs> and fucking face plant. Yeah, gravity is going to come hey, into work. Yeah, we're going to be fucked. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Definitely not on our side. Um, I fucking, you know, skateboarding was fun. Like, I'll buy skateboards now, and I'll hang them on the wall. Like, all the old skateboards that I used to ride and the different companies and shit. And I think about it, I'm like, could I still do it? And there's there's just no possible way. You know? Yeah. I've seen my dad, like, one time he broke his hip. Because I remember we were, like, 12, 13, me and my cousins. And my dad's like, I'll fucking take y'all skating. You know, he fucking drops in. Hip broke. Mm. Literally just laying there. Hip broke. Uh, my stepmom's like, I fucking told you, you shouldn't be skateboarding. Well, God damn it, Mom. <laughs> Let him do what he wants. But know. he still does it. You know, he'll fucking uh, go out to the driveway and fucking skate around a little bit on Thanksgiving and everybody will fucking give him a round of applause, you know. Ha! I enjoy it. You can still do it. <laughs> You're running out of time, pal. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah, buddy. You got it, Dad. Keep skating. Skate or die. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck race car skateboards. <sighs> Mm. I drift it down my chest. Mm. Uh, a little hammered or what? You know a shot? Oh, not hammered yet. I think we should do another one. You want another one? I mean, fuck, why not? I got a fucking 30, uh, a 30 meter walk back to the house. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, we drank half of that bottle, bud. Yeah, that's fine. We can kill this whole fucking thing. You I don't think care. so? We might. You think we could do it? We could put down some shit. What buddy. do you think would happen if we kill that whole bottle? Uh, we need just we did, uh, we just need to accept that we have a problem. I there's there's no way around it, dude. I gotta take Theo to the vet, and you gotta go to work. Yeah, I'll make it work. I don't like this. I'll cups. go in this. Okay. Hey, boss man, I'm ready to fucking clean some cars. Yeah, but cheers. cheers to the podcast. Episode two. Subscribe. <laughs> This is not going to turn out good.
Uh, <laughs> uh, fuck. That's a lot. I gotta pee, bro. That's like 30% fucking straight to the dome. That's more than 30%. That's 95%. I'm gonna steal your catalytic converter. Dude, that's fucking I strong. I have nothing in me today except one slice of cheese. Why? I don't want to eat anymore. <laughs> but it's not. I'm going to be fat, dude. I, I mean, yeah, we're, we're both fat, but I mean, you're just eating one slice of cheese at work and then fucking cleaning cars. You clean 30 cars and eat one slice of provolone or what? Why? I wait until I get home. I go to my fridge. I get to that pepper jack station, open one up. I peel it off. I take that piece of parchment paper off. Throw that in the trash, and I uh, nibble. And I nibble. A, like a I nibble mouse. for about forty-five seconds. Uh, that's all I got in me. Mm, just one piece of cheese. Just one piece. That's all I have. You want to order a pizza? No. No. Thin crust. Nope. Supreme. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> you really don't want to? I really don't. I do. Because if I look at it, I'm going to gain seven thousand pounds. <laughs> I was going to walk today. Yeah. It, didn't walk. Not one. How many steps did you get in today? Well, you know. Tell me. Because I'm at like 7,000. How many steps did I get in today? I'm at like 7,000. Let's see. This is without my watch, so this is probably inaccurate. <laughs> I do look at Saturday during the show. Fuck! Oh, it's the only one in the green. <laughs> look at Sunday. God damn! <laughs> How the fuck? Fuck you, wife! Hang it on! How the fuck? <laughs> Hang on! I want to review this shit. This is why I don't eat, bro. Wednesday, 5,000 steps. That's fucking pretty good. Thursday, 6,036. Decent. Friday, how the fuck did you walk that much? Nine thousand we went bar to bar to bar. Oh, that's right. We was in Nashville, nine thousand four hundred and sixty-eight. Saturday, decent, six thousand four hundred and twenty. Sunday, one thousand five hundred and sixty-nine. It's red. What did you do, bro? <laughs> I sat at that <laughs> fucking desk and did nothing. I, I, I know we played video games Sunday, but god damn. I played for like three hours and I went to fucking sleep. You got 16,000 steps on fucking This GTA, is what I did for you? seven hours. <laughs> what did what you, you play that you're driving? I drove home for seven hours. Bro. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, that's right. In real life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, we like, drove... it kind of wore me out, so I'm like, I'm just yeah. on video games. I'm so... God damn. Man. All right, man, I feel like shit. I'm going to bed. Yeah. I'm... GTA, I know we, because we got online together, GTA, on Sunday, but damn it. We got to get some steps in. Summertime's coming up. We're going to be at the pool down here at the apartments. I was going to walk today, but I was productive. I cleaned up a lot. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I, I noticed when I walked in, I was like, oh, okay. I you know, you need to get some more better. shit on these walls, bro. Mm -hmm. That's some, the next plan. That's the next plan. Get some more. Some more shit going. I'll tell you what. I got to pee. I'm going to pause this real fast, and then I'm going to go pee, and then I'll be right back. Okay. I'm going to edit this out. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll pee too then. Oh. <clears throat> Uh, well, let's just jump back in on that uh, that notebook. Want to jump back in on that notebook? Yeah, are you live on there? Um, yes, but I can, you know me, I'll cut it down. All right, we're live on the button. Oh, oh, we're back, Spotify. Uh, we're had back. a quick uh, pee break. Yeah, we had to take a pee. And that's the thing, that's what makes me nervous is everybody's like, hang on, I got to adjust my microphone. Everybody's like, would you ever go on Joe Rogan? I'd be like, yeah, it was a bathroom, bro, because like, I ain't sitting there for four hours. Like, you ever watch a Joe Rogan episode? It's like four hours long and they don't pee. I can't do that. Bro. I, I drink too much beer to not pee. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> how do they do that? I have no idea. I have no fucking idea. Um, look, we got empty cans. Do you want a Zen, bro? 
Mm. Want to pop a Zan with me? Yeah, I'll pop one with you. Yeah. I'm I love a these. Bit of nicotine and anybody, on. listen, I'm not even sponsored by them. I probably shouldn't even say it on YouTube, but I, uh, I used to chew a can a day. I've been down to a can a week here. I'm on them Zans, baby. Them citrus, it tastes like you're chewing fucking uh, Fruit Loops. It's fantastic. Yeah, I don't mind nicotine every once in a while. Nice uh, detox. Oh, it's good. I fucking, you know, I didn't do much today, man. I sat at home, argued with a hedgehog. I don't know if you've ever done that, but the hedgehogs, let's be honest, they're fucking assholes. They're mean. I, they're not they're, nice. they're, no, they're not. Uh, was your aunt nice? Because I know you said your aunt had some hedgehogs. Uh, one of them was, well, there were ants slash moms. I, I don't know, man. There was, there was, there was what? Fuck. There were so many. I don't even know how to keep track of there were so many, but. There, one was nicer than the other type of situation, right, right, right. you know. That well, kind of thing. see, I have Theo, and I feel like he has a right to be an asshole because he got hungry and chewed five of his back toes off. Yeah. So I feel like he has the right to be an asshole, but like, dude, I like he's getting better. Like, he'll let me pet him. I can pet him without him spiking up, and yeah. he'll let me like put my hand under him, and he'll chill. But like, you know, he just like if I'm like, hey, bud, we got a fucking Get you up. We got to clean your cage out. He's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what the fuck, dude? And like he'll be eating, and I'll go over there to try to fucking pet him, and he'll just be like, <laughs> fucking spikes up. Like, bro, listen, I got, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to help you here. You know, I mean, dude, dude eats <laughs> turkey every day, fucking stinky cat food, regular cat food, cat treats. He's got a wheel to run on, fresh water. <laughs> You know what? I mean? So it's just you know, if anybody ever gets a hedgehog, and when before I got him, I was looking up YouTube videos because I was like, how hard could it be to take care of a hedgehog, right? Oh yeah. And I watched some videos when people were like, you need patience. Well, they was right. That, I mean, he bit the fuck out of you. How's that finger doing? Um, there's still a mark. From you ever gonna try it. to pet him again? <laughs> There's, There's still, still a mark, mark there. Where he yeah. bit you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still there. You, you, you got to try again. I'm going to fuck with him. He's, he's going to like me. I'm going to fucking get he, him on his back. He's, he's getting better. I'm going to hold him a glove. He's getting better. Next week, I'm going to give him a back. I'm going to get him to where he's on his back. I'm just mm, going to use my Rub thumbs. that fucking stomach. Rub his belly. Yeah. Very gently. Give him that fucking stomach rub. Real it just It just been through hell, man. I mean, somebody kept him in a laundry basket, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm trying to, you know, you're in this big ass. 20 by 40 cage here, you know, fucking be cool, man. He just, mm. he's just irate, hates everybody. So, <laughs> he'll figure it out. He's like a boomer. <laughs> you know? He is. He's like a grumpy fucking old man he that's is. so entitled, you know. He just feels like he's owed everything, beats the fuck out of he does. Yeah. every sandwich every just, week. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, he just eats, sleeps, and. And that's it, you know. Yeah, learn that so go fuck yourself. I I rule the world. <laughs> the brain, I know you had some notes, Brandon. So what? What do you got written down for us? Well, I know you got this full notebook, like we're in fucking college, and we you, you've been thinking of some ideas, and these ideas, of, some kind of things you want to put out in the podcast mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So I've been thinking of some things, and these are also some things that 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 fans have requested. Yes, for the new yes. podcast. Um. So I don't know if we want to touch base on some of these so soon, um, but uh, let's yeah. talk about uh, squeeze me. <laughs> What's the most wild on the road moment mm. that we've had since I've been on on the road? Wild so, on the road moment. Because I'll I'll try to think with that with you. Um, Cassville was pretty out there. Cassville was a lot. Um, yeah, that was a lot. The <laughs> casino got pretty wild. The casino, the casino got weird, and and mm -hmm. the casino mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. Which you guys can see the poster in the background. Mm -hmm. Um, but the casino was like this thing to where I was like, oh my god, we're doing this big casino. We sold like six hundred and four seats, and I was like, I went into the casino thing like thinking, like this is gonna be uh. Some I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life, which it is. It's amazing. I had friends, yeah. family, teachers, fucking all came out. We sold the place out, and and Kansas Crossing. Thank you for for having us. But 
I remember people were still coming through the door. We we still had like 150, 200 people coming through the door. I mean, there was a lot of people still trying to sit down. They didn't even get a beer yet. You yeah, know what I'm saying? 100%. Like, didn't even yep. get a beer mm-hmm. at, a, at a comedy show. And I, and I was trying to get a hold of the general manager, and it, and it took him like, like an hour to get him back there. And, and finally, he gets back there, and he's like, hey, man, this is the casino business. He's like, I don't care what you're doing, and I don't care about your show. He's like, as long as these people are out there gambling by 930. And I'm like, I don't. I don't know if, if that's the kind of business I'm trying to be in. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. when it comes to comedy and my fans and my followers, that's what I love. You know, I'm, I met some people at Walmart today and took pictures with them. And and, and just, I'm in that for the fans, man. Th- these people paid for babysitters. They paid money for the tickets. Yeah. They paid money for drinks. And that's, these, uh, that's, uh, that's great that you see that because, like, wasn't for them, you know. Where would you be? Yeah, no, I wouldn't be anywhere. Yeah, exactly. I, I would and, still you know, be working and, a day job. And it sucks because there's a lot of people that don't <laughs> really. There, there's a lot of celebrities that don't really realize that yeah. they don't. They don't see like, man, these yeah. guys really and, went out of their way to do this, and it's like, man, you know, I really want to take care of them the best way that I possibly can. Exactly. And I look at other <clears throat> comedians, which I'm not going to mention names because we're not in the business of doing that. But they'll charge you $150 for a meet and greet to take pictures. Well, after the casino show, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to take pictures with everybody we can until they leave. Because mm-hmm. that's the kind of person I am. These people paid money. They come out. They sold this motherfucker out. Mm-hmm. We're going to take fucking photos. And 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 the casino, I, I don't think they were happy about us taking photos. And it was just... A lot of the casino staff was nice. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's just... I don't know if that's the world... Of comedy I want to be in. And that's kind of been the road that I've been on in comedy is I go to these comedy clubs and I go to these casinos and I go to these places that normal comedians do. And I'm just, I guess I'm just some fucking redneck from the backwoods, I think is what it is. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't look at the dollar signs. Like I, you know, I drive a brand new Jeep. I live on a golf course. I'm very blessed, but I don't, go out to these shows thinking about money. I go out to these shows and I think about telling jokes. I think about meeting fans. I think about taking pictures with them. Uh, have, you know, making them have a good night. The fans are the first thing in my mind. And I just felt like the comedy show was just such a big deal. And I mean, it was a big deal. They had billboards in my hometown. They were advertising it. My family, friends, everybody's like, oh, my God, people I haven't talked to in 12 years are like, oh, my God, you're coming to this casino. And it's like, yeah, bro, I've been out here on the road for the last nine years. Uh I've driven over a million miles doing comedy. And nobody in my hometown ever realized it until that fucking casino popped up. And it was like, that's cool. Come out, come hang out. But, like, I'm here for my fans. I'm just a, a good old boy. Like, I don't want people to pay these fucking outrageous ticket prices that other comedians are putting on. You know, 200 bucks for a front row seat, $150 for a meet and greet. That's not me, bro. I mean, I've had COVID yeah, five yeah. times. <laughs> I've yeah. had COVID five yeah. times because I love meeting people. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, if it's any consolation, I mean, fuck. You know, I started as a fan. You know, me and Noah, my mom, we all started it. My dad, even too, we all started yeah. as fans. So like, you know, I, 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 you know, whenever we first met, which is something we can get into later. Like, I <coughs> purposely wore that shirt, and I was like, man, I love fucking racing. I was like, he said he was gonna be there. I was like, I'm gonna wear this shirt, and I didn't see if he sees it, or if I see him, I'm like, hey, man, love your shit, you know, type of thing. I had absolutely no doubt on my mind that you were going to be some cocky fuck. About right. It. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. Right. Well, thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, we'll fuck podcast you. Together. <laughs> you know? Like, I didn't think that at all. So it's, I was like, yeah, man. I was like, I wanted to actually meet this guy because he seemed like he was personable. Like, he was approachable. You know, you've got some people that are like, you know, they 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 want fame and they want attention so bad. But you know, they don't understand the repercussions that come with it, and they right. don't they they don't accept that, and that's right. where it's like, okay, well, that guy was an asshole, Absolutely. and that's not the case with you. So, and that that's what's really nice, you know. You make sure at most shows, every show, 
Um, what do I want to say before I get off stage, Brandon? You say you. I'll be. I'll stay uh, here till the stay last here person. Till the leaves. Last person leaves. I will stay here till the last person leaves and get a photo. Every person that wants to photo or wants to meet, I will wait. And, and that's, that's what we do every single time. Every single time. And we usually wait until there's just people hanging out at the bar, yep. and then we roll up. And We're then we like, leave. okay, we get the point. Nobody's wanting to come in. But I, this is our time to go. I, I just, so. I, I grew up different than a lot of comedians. I grew up around a lot of bad shit, drug use, uh, bad neighborhoods, just bad things. And, 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 you know, I spent a lot of time working in factories, call centers, things that, things that, you know, it, it, I've been doing comedy for nine years. Mm-hmm. Last year, I quit my day job because I got so fucking busy with it. And I just, I'm a man of the people. I'm not going to sit here and, and, and do a show and, and, and make people pay this. I mean, if we're doing, you know, 2,000 seat shows, then yeah, of course, we got to make them pay for a meet and greet because you just can't meet 2,000 people. Right. But when we yeah. went to that, that casino, not, nothing against them. They were great. The people we met were great. The staff treated us great. But I'm just, I, I meet these managers and these people that, that they're, they're like, hey, come do this, come do this, come do this. And comedy clubs are even worse. Because how many comedy clubs have we done that are just fucking terrible? They're bad. We're selling nineteen dollar nachos, fucking twenty dollar tickets, nine dollar drinks. Yeah, and yeah. it's like we do a comedy club, and then they're like, "Oh, we're going out of business." You wonder why? It's because you know, and I respect the old road dogs who have been on the road for forty seven years, and and you take care of your family by going from comedy club to comedy club. I understand, but we live in two thousand twenty four. Yeah, people are walking around with Oculus glasses now have you seen that shit yep oculus glasses <laughs> like, Google lens glasses. like they're literally on the internet while they're walking around yep. if you don't think that the internet is not your future if you don't think that if you're not going to book comedians who make videos online i'm not going to do that i'm just going to sit here and book road dogs if that's what you think then unfortunately brother you're gonna have to go be a manager at the fucking denny's because that's not what it is anymore. You know, you can't. And there's so many comedy clubs. And that's why I don't do comedy clubs. And I don't do casinos. And I don't do these other things. It's because, like, you could get booked at a, We get booked at comedy clubs. And we're like, oh, yeah, a comedy club. And we walk in and they're absolutely fucking assholes. Yep. Assholes to the fucking, fucking dirt. shit. Yep. Yeah. You're they, a fucking they, Facebook comedian? Are you a human being? Fuck you. Too fucking bad. Yeah. <laughs> And, and they, 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 they treat us like shit. They give us a Sunday, a Wednesday. You know, I'm, I'm not going to mention the name of a club, but we were at a show watching someone else, a uh, big-time comedian. Yeah. We were at a club. Oh, and, yeah. And, and the mm-hmm. comedy club owner was like, hey, Copenhagen Bandit. Every time I went to get a beer, he's like, hey, come talk to me after the show. I'll buy you some. I'll give you free beer. Come talk to me. And, like, we went and talked to him, and the dude, like, straight up offered me a Wednesday when I could book a, a bar in his same town. Yeah, and sell it out. And sell it out. And it's like, I can't do this, man. And yeah, uh, the, no. the comedy clubs and and just the comedy world is so fucked up right now. And I listen to Joe Rogan and the things that Joe Rogan talks about. And Joe Rogan's got this new club down in Austin. And Joe Rogan's doing it because Joe He's Rogan sees it. what's going on. Mm-hmm. Joe Rogan, and I'm not a big fan of Kill Tony. I'm not. Um, the guy who runs it is very biased, but Joe Rogan sees what's going on, and he's like, hey, we have a comedy club. If you want a spot on the open mic night, fucking come get it. I'm the biggest comedian podcaster in the world. You can come down here and do a set. Everybody's welcome. We don't even want to break even. He's like, we just want to do comedy, and that's mm-hmm. that's what's beautiful. Um, th- there needs to be more comedy clubs in the world like that because these comedy clubs nowadays are, are hanging on by a thread. And I had a comedian message me the other day who I used to feature for back in the day. And uh, he's like, hey, man, I got I got a couple of these shows, 700 bucks to do both. We're living in Joe Biden time. <laughs> I can't do shows for 700 bucks. I can't. Mm-hmm. It's just not possible. Oh, um, yeah. So... And, and and it sucks because I go I do com the comedy club that I started out at 
uh, the Looney Saloon in Miami, Oklahoma, it's gone. And the reason mm -hmm. it's gone is because they've got these on the road acts who've been doing it for 45 years plus, or they've got managers. They've got managers. That's what all these comedians say. I got managers. I got in this comedy club because I got a manager. Okay. That's cool. By my own. <laughs> so you did you did four nights at a comedy club for a thousand bucks because you have a manager who works for a agency. That's fine. We just did a show at a bar for four grand and sold it out because yeah. we don't fuck with that shit. Yeah. And that's how we've been since I've started out. We've been this weird outcast. And I don't want to compare myself because a lot of people will be like, oh, you just want to be up church. I don't want to compare myself to him. But have you ever noticed how he's an outcast of country music mm -hmm. doing his own thing? Yeah, everybody that's kind of what, That's kind of where we're at with comedy. Uh -huh. We're just doing our own fucking thing. And and these comedy clubs, I just can't work with them. I, and you've been there. You've seen it. Um, yeah, uh, I've learned very quickly of how broad the spectrum is on on the love and hate and the the business side of things even more or less i mean jesus fuck i mean we even meet younger mm -hmm. comedians like marcus when i met him which marcus travels with us mm -hmm. he was doing shows with the looney band and you know they just they use people they want you to work the door yeah, they I want mean, you to wash dishes it's if, like if you don't have the slightest fucking clue on how the comedy game works like yeah you know i can tell a few jokes it's good fucking luck I yeah mean, no good absolutely. luck you know being on the road for two years now like i've fucking learned so much so quickly and it's that this is it's it you know something that 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 that, that comedy resonates with is the music industry mm -hmm. it's a very 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 cutthroat industry you have to you i mean you have to know people if you don't good fucking luck to you mm -hmm. and e even if you know people you got to worry about those people trying to fucking burn you i mean you have to worry about all these you, it, it's a big what if factor um and you learn these things very quickly it, it's a huge cutthroat industry you know, nobody's going to do anything for you. You got to do this shit for yourself. And even if you have management or um, anything of the sort, good fucking luck, man. Because <laughs> most chances are they're in it for themselves. So, it, 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 you know, bring, it brings a lot of light to it. It helped me realize a lot of things. And it helped me quite... <sighs> It doesn't really help, but it does make me question. It's like, man, how do these fucking big dogs make it to the yeah. top? How much? Have you shit? seen Netflix that sucks straight fucking dick? Oh, and it's like, how, yeah. how are you on How Netflix? much shit did you have to eat, man? Yeah. And it's because like, you know so much. I can't submit to that. Like, if I was a comedian, pardon me, I would never do it. I would never, because I have a, a big enough problem listening to rules. I don't like people telling me what to fucking do as it is. Well, that's the thing. So, and right. that's the problem. Like, I should be able to do what I want freely because I express, like, hey, this is the fucking United States, baby. We're able to do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll be goddamned if I let somebody fucking bark orders at me yeah. every day. You know what I mean? I mean, we got. I struggle enough at a day job doing that shit. Yeah. So. The, 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 and that, that's the thing is, like, we've done so many shows at VFWs, bars event centers uh wherever the fuck we've done shows and i talked to these comedy club owners and they fucking mouth me about it they go yeah. oh well it's fucking what you make at a bar yeah that's what i make at a bar and you're trying to cut me under what i make at a bar and yeah. it's like like i had a comedy club that wanted me to fly me to florida for like two grand okay let's add this up so i'm flying to florida with merch with two other people and everything else, that money's gone. So not you only the flight ticket, to do expenses, it. people you're carrying with you, their their cargo, that's a flight trip there and back. You know, yep. you got to factor in these. Like, we're trying to survive. We're yeah, just we're, trying we're, to survive. We're, we're trying to pay the bills, and, and we're doing comedy and, and having fun doing it. And that's the thing. It's like we could go do a show at a fucking VFW, Brandon, and uh, make twice what we do at a comedy club. Yeah. So. 
Um, and I mean, I'll be goddamned if I come on the road and just start not having fun. I won't do it. Then how many comedy yeah. clubs have we actually been to? Yeah, fucking pour me one too. Fuck it. How many comedy clubs have we been to to where they're huge major dicks to us and they're like, do this, do that. And then fucking two months later, they're out of business and the manager's messaging me. Asking yeah, me because I, I open. it's either you or me that goes on stage right. and it's like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck this. We're going to do it this way. Because it's what you people want, exactly. not what the cocksuckers want, what what the fucking owners want. Right. It, they, they, they bark all these orders to because they feel like they have, a, have to have a sense of power because their career died or they're just road dog owners, assholes, or they're just assholes. I mean, it doesn't matter. It, it it's about the fucking people at the end of the day. You know, how do people, I mean, how, how do you think, I mean, gross as it sounds, how do you think big corporate America got, got big? Like places yeah. like Walmart. They were about the people. They're always about well, the people. The customer the is always right. And the, not the fucking owner, not the person running it. Comedy clubs don't give a fuck. Oh, like, they when, don't fucking care at all. When, when we talk about like trying to take pictures with everybody, and trying to do what we do, um, trying to factor in the fact that they had to have a babysitter and everything else, buy a ticket, fucking buy drinks, buy food. The comedy clubs don't factor that in. And the problem is, is that I do. And I'm never yeah. going to get, like, I'm going to do a special this year. I'm determined to do a special. And I think I'm going to do it with the Black Thorn and Joplin, and then I'm going to write a whole new 45. Whole new 45. But. I'm going to do a special, and I'm going to drop it on YouTube, and I'm going to make it like a dollar. If people want to watch it, they pay a dollar, they can fucking watch it. But yeah. these fucking comedy clubs, man, they're, out, they're, they're, they're fucking out of control. And, and my biggest thing is, is when I message them and I try to get a show there or I do get a show there, they treat me like absolute garbage. Like, how many Sundays have we done and driven back home at 3 a.m.? Oh, it's it's fucking bullshit. Eat, you know? Just eating shit. Just eating shit. Not making money. Eating yeah. shit. I don't need that. I don't need the bullshit. Um, I I just don't need it. And 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 going back to the casino, it was a great show, but oh, the staff great. was just great. overrated assholes. I mean, they were mean. They were they, they were, were rude. very they were they were very mean. rude. I I know we called the the general manager in, and like I said. We got 200 people coming through the door. Uh, what what do we do? And and he said, I don't give a fuck about your show. Just as long as they're on the casino floor, mm -hmm. um, you need to be done by 930. And I was like, I, I just I can't mean, do just, it. You the, know? The, I, I just can't do it. Because so. at that point, I mean, we're just fucking dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, we, at that we, point, we, you know. Our, you know, your job is to talk shit. At the end of the day, you right. fucking make jokes. <sighs> when it comes to people like, okay, well, yeah, you're just talking shit. I don't give a fuck about you or anything. You know, you make people laugh. You're having a good time. Go fuck yourself. Well, let me tell you, you brought all these people in. I need them out on the floor. It's not about that. Well, that's the thing is, is with, with comedy clubs or bars or anything, we make them a lot of money. So we, in, in return, we just ask for a little bit of decency. A little bit of... Yeah, just a little bit of hospitality. <laughs> a little like, bit of hospitality. Hey, we're making you so much money, but I mean, it's instead yeah. it's like, eat shit, go fuck yourself. And it's yeah. like, wow, so it's, dude, that really sucks because like I thought this was like a mutual thing. Like, you're making money, I'm making money. I just want to pay my bills. Like, I'm happy with anything and any... any you know, and I'm not getting that side from you guys. You guys are like, you could basically like go fuck yourself. And it's like, man, this this kind of hurts. Like, yeah. this is such a cutthroat industry, and that that and that's what it that's what it boils down to, man. It's when, like I've I've noticed that so fucking quickly of how this this industry works, and I'm just like, wow, it's a lot. I would have had when, no idea when, when I first started doing comedy. Uh, it was at a, at a comedy club, and uh, it was in uh, Miami, Oklahoma, and it was on the top of a casino, the Stables Casino. Yeah. And uh, when I went there, I went there quite a bit. So about the first year of my comedy career, I went there, and I kind of grew through the ranks. 
and I'm not going to say his name, um, but there was a guy running it. He, uh, he would have me come in, and they had open mic nights, but they were different. So it was open mic nights where he could win money. So me and Gracie, my ex fiance, we would get up there early. Um, you could win three hundred bucks for first place, two hundred bucks for second place, and and a hundred bucks for third place. Mm-hmm. And I went up there for a year consistently. That's where I started. Every fucking month, I'd hit it twice. Boom, boom, boom. I'd go to the Blackthorn, do open mic nights in Joplin. I was fucking just, I was just working my fucking hammering ass, it. Yep. hammering it as hard as I could. And we didn't have, dude, we had a 96 Mazda Protégé. Uh, this fucking thing was leaking fluent. We'd have to stop every fucking 30 miles, put water in it. It took us an hour to get to Miami, so we'd have to stop twice to put water in the radiator. From Joplin? From Joplin. Fuck. And we had to take the back way because we didn't have money for tolls. <laughs> we'd have right. to, we, but the, the monster wouldn't go on the highway because it would shake at 60. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't, we couldn't, right. we had to go the back way, and, and we did that for months and months. And every time I would go to these open mics, I was like, you know what? I know I'm good. I mm. know I'm good. I know my jokes are good. I know what I'm doing here is good. I'm working my ass off. And and I never never got top three. <clears throat> never did. There would be people who would come to the casino, like on a, a, a bachelor fucking pre-marriage bullshit. What do they call it? A bachelor party? Yeah. They would come down there for those. And the dude would come up there and do stand-up, and they'd give them first place. And they fucking ate at me, and then ate at me, and then ate at me. So... Uh, fast forward, my uh, the guy who was running the comedy club, I'm not going to mention, uh, I mean, obviously did me dirty. Uh, he got kind of bucked out of that thing. And then a good friend of mine, uh, Dave Short, who's passed away now from COVID, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, took it over. And Dave Short put me on hella shows. I was opening for James Johan, fucking uh, Daryl Felsberg. I was fucking opening for Hugh Jacks. Um, but unfortunately, uh, Dave's not with us anymore. But then fast forward again to like two years later, I'm doing a show with Leighton and Levi and I'm on the road and some girl comes up to me and I think we're in Oklahoma somewhere and she goes, hey, I used to be a judge at the Looney Saloon. Um, They always told us not to vote for you, not to put you in the top three. Really? So I never, I never won an open mic night and a girl actually told me, I think it might have been at the Blackthorn maybe. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember where it was. But she actually but told why? me, I don't know, that because I think when you go into a place like that, with that many comedians and that, just that, that, that feeling that these comedians get when they do, they host an open mic night or they run a show or run an open mic night. You know what that sounds like? I can't have you being funnier than me. <laughs> yeah, That's no, it does, it does, like. it does, it does yeah. sound like, just like. Okay, I'll be and, funnier, and, yeah. and if I am, then give me a fucking weekend. The, the, the girl literally told me that she was a judge and she was told to not vote for me. Oh um, my god, dude. And that really shocked me. And that that's what told me at a point in my comedy career, which was probably four or five years in at that point, um, really told me that I was doing something because if, a, if someone who's managing a comedy club is going to tell their judges to not vote, yeah, this you know. I mean, that, you but that's the you. thing is all everybody who runs anything in comedy, whether it's an open mic night, a yeah. fucking show, you a comedy a club, cutthroat industry. My they're either all yeah, they're, they're comedians who didn't make it, they're actors who didn't make it, they're somebody who didn't do good enough in what they wanted to do, so they fucking shut it down. If mm-hmm. if you're good, if you go out there and you're good, they don't fucking like you. And that's what I told Marcus, because Marcus is calling me. He's like, hey, bro, I went to fucking Zanies in Nashville, and, and like they didn't like it. I'm like, because you're better than them. Like it, and it's just like you said earlier. Uh, we're not going to mention the club name, but we was talking to the comedy club here, a local comedy club, and, and he said, uh, we can't have you go on stage because you'll be funnier than the, the main act. act. It's like, okay. We'll give you a Wednesday. Then Did you give just me a hear weekend. what you just fucking said, bro? You literally just said that I was funnier than the act. So, why not give me a weekend? But You know what, man? Will you give me one too, bro? All this is I'm just, down. it's a bunch of bullshit. It sucks. 
what we can narrow this down to is that the comedy world is an absolute fucking cutthroat industry. Um let's 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 get to a little bit of more of a positive positive side of things yeah what's uh i mean just talking about that it's just so frustrating and, <laughs> Dude, yeah, and, i mean it just really gets me in my feelings um i have to go to work you, tomorrow you want to read him the schedule brian and i'll go pee um yeah tell him where we're coming you know what um yeah i can do that let me uh let me pull it up uh we'll get to a little bit of a of a more positive yeah, subject here we're... See, that's the thing. That's why I don't go in to talk about... But that's about... the thing. Like, we also... Like, this podcast, it's not all about just funny, 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 funny. Like, we're, we're human beings. Yeah. We gotta talk about we're shit We're talking about shit on. that we do. What we yeah. do. Yeah. You know, we gotta um, talk about shit Talking about comedy. About. Talking about the business. And, exactly. And com- uh, this is the last thing I'm gonna say before we move on, is all those people have always given me fuel. When they tell me Wednesday, I'll give you a Wednesday or Sunday, I'm like, all right, motherfucker. I'll be back in fucking yeah. I'll be back in two years, baby, and let me know where you're at. Yeah. So I'm gonna go pee. Brandon's yeah. gonna read the schedule. Yeah. I'll be right back. We're gonna let him pee. Um. So while we're doing this very, very, very quick intermission here, um, we just did Nashville, Tennessee, the past weekend that this is recorded. Um. So uh, February seventeenth, we will be in Salina, Kansas. The first show has sold out. Um, we have added a second show to Salina, Kansas, and those tickets are also selling quickly. So if you guys would like, go ahead and get your tickets now while you can. It's selling very fast. That Again, that is February 17th. Um, March 2nd, we will be in Newton, Illinois. Um, we will be doing a show there March 2nd. March, is that 9th? Yeah, we'll go with I said 7th in the previous podcast. I'm pretty sure it was 9th. March 9th, we'll be in uh, Fort Scott, Kansas. Uh, only a couple hours away from our hometown. So, uh, March 23rd, we'll be in St. Joe, Missouri. Excuse me. Pardon my French. Um, April 13th, we'll be in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, so, get your tickets. You guys can get all these tickets through Eventbrite. Some places you can get them at the door. Just as a disclaimer now. Uh, April 27th, we'll be in Riverton, Illinois, and that is at the Backroom Lounge. Funny enough, I'm actually wearing their hat. They're great people. Um, May 11th, we'll be in Rushville, Illinois at the Lipstick Pig. Mm. Loved that venue. I love the Lipstick Pig. The owner is a wonderful woman. She's a very, very nice lady. So if you guys are in the Illinois area, couple hours out and if you don't mind making the trek come out it's a great time and it's a great venue um may 17th will be in pierce city missouri uh june 7th and 8th will be at tulsa comedy club we'll be doing a two-day show there um so whichever day you prefer june 7th or 8th will be you can get your tickets at eventbrite um i believe you can get them at the door there as well too is that correct yes yes, yes you can Tulsa Comedy Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Great place. Uh, we love the owner there. He's a great man. Um, One of the few comedy clubs that are not assholes. Yes. We love him. We love, uh, what's his name? Um, Coach. Coach. Love Coach. Coach is a great guy. Hey, guys. Uh, so uh, we're rounding up the schedule here. July 13th, we'll be in Pena, Illinois. We're already selling tickets to that pretty quickly. Um, it's a great, great place. Great venue. Uh, August 3rd. This is the one that I'm most excited for because it's my birthday month and it's only a week before my birthday. August 3rd, we'll be at Route 66 Speedway in Armorillo, Texas. <coughs> it went down the wrong hole. I'm good. God damn. I'm ready for that one. I'm taking off some extra days for that that show. That's going to be a <coughs> big fucking deal. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, if you, so for the Texas fans that are asking if you're in the Armorillo area or a couple hours out, come out. It's going to be a great Time. We're at the at the big AC or ASCS sprint car race there that weekend, um, and uh, to round this out, November 9th on the schedule so far we have Independence, Kansas. So if you guys, all, all the Kansas fans, we have a um, we have another show, we have Salina and then Fort Scott. But if anybody's in the Independence area, or if you guys want to double up, triple up, come out to Kansas, Independence, Kansas. Thank you, guys. 
But anyways, bud, we got the uh, schedule on out. It's time for a shot. Listen, man. What else we got on the books? Oh, we got a bunch. Ah! <laughs> I rub my wiener. I love girls that are loving me. I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm hammered. All right. Brandon's um, got some notes. Yeah, I do. I do have some notes, man. So, so uh, I've heard you talk about it a couple times um, here and there. You didn't really get into it too much. So, it's the podcast. So, we're gonna see if we could really get in depth to it. Where did it all start? I mean, I mean, from the fucking beginning, <laughs> right? I mean, from the moment it all happened. From the moment it all happened, he trying to get laughs, everything, because there's people that still ask to this day that don't know. Well, I tell you this. So the funny thing is, is last night I couldn't sleep, mm-hmm. and YouTube had the free movie uh, "Smoking the Bandit" on. Love it. So I clicked it because it's one of my favorite movies. So here's where it started, and I'll be honest with you. Um, so I have a who I call my sister, which is actually my cousin because Aunt Pam, it, it's her daughter, and we grew up together. But um, so it was uh, who I call my sister, Katie. We're sitting there. Um, this is pre tornado in Joplin, so the apartments we're living at, they're not mm. there anymore. Oh, yeah. Tornado took them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're chilling, and I'm like, I, I kept seeing these people on YouTube who would, like, try chew and, like, talk about it and review it and be funny, kind of. So I thought, you know what? I can do this. I thought, fucking why not? I'll start making videos. I've always been a funny guy. I used to sit in in class in school and and fucking be the class clown. And, you know, I remember teachers kicking me out of class laughing while they were kicking me out. Like, they're, like, going oh, yeah. while yeah. they're laughing. Like, I could get this them going. This is in high school? Yeah, and I've, oh, always, yeah. I've always had that shitty, nasty. Here's the thing. And you've been around me long enough that you know, because I've said things yeah. before to where, like, I thought was funny, and you're like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm like, constantly. Whoa, I, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly trying to make people laugh. Um, yeah, all the time, 100%. So, I was in high school, probably 11th grade. And we're sitting in my my cousin's apartment there, uh, Katie, and I and I'm like, hey, I want to start making these these chew review videos and, and start making people laugh and and trying to get them going and, and trying to make some funny videos. I was like, what do you think my name should be? And and me and her are chilling there and her, and their two kids, my nephews now, which are fucking eighteen, by the way. Grand God, dad, boomer, school. you feel like Grad, fucking dad, old I, I'm old. Yeah. I'm an old man. I mean, Philip to come over on Christmas. He's fucking eighteen. He's it, it's so crazy to me, but they're there. They're like four or five years old, and we're, we're, we're hanging out. And I said, I said, what should my name be on this uh, trying these chew reviews here? And she goes, well, what do you chew? And at the time, I had a can of Copenhagen, and I said, I, said, I got some Copenhagen on me. And she looks up at the TV. She looks up at the TV, and it's, it's a Smokey oh, and the right. Bandit. And she says, uh, well, what about Copenhagen Bandit? Ooh. And that was the name. That's where it started. So it started right there. In uh, school. It's, 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 oh, yeah, dude. I was like 16. So it started right there. She's like, okay, Copenhagen Bandit. You know, there Sorry, it is. Sorry, officers. Boom. It fucking it, it happened. And, and she said the name. And I said, okay. So I started making fucking YouTube videos of me trying to, which, which is weird. You would think it was weird and nobody would want to watch it. It right? wasn't weird to me. But a lot because, of people watch it. A quick side note. I used to watch dip reviews. I don't fucking dip. I don't like it. I just like peop- seeing people's reactions. I'm like, how oh, they talk shit. about it. Right. Because uh, they used to watch a guy, you know, might as well say his name. He's, you know, why, why not? I've watched him for fucking years. Outlaw. Was outlaw? Oh, yeah. He's outlaw. Oh, yeah. I, I never dip, but what I would used to do is chaw. Oh, chaw. What's chaw? The chaw where you fucking, the red man shit, where you fucking chew it. The oh, chewing yeah, like tobacco. the fucking, oh, this, I, that's what they call it. They call it chaw. That's what we call it. Like chaw. you're hunting down a fucking. Yeah. <laughs> so he used to reduce, he used to review some of that shit and, and do dip and all okay. this and that. I was like, man, I was like, man. 
he was he used to talk about it. I was like, God, I'd like to try that because it's like, man, the buzz you get from it's like it's almost like electric. Like, right. he'd, he'd bring it out of you, and I'm like, man, it seems so interesting. I was like, fuck the dip reviews. What's he doing on the side? And he started going on all these other videos on yeah. this thing, kind of like what you did. The, so the thing, the, the, sorry, I'm gonna cut you off, right? No, you're good. Uh, but, you're good. but the thing is, is back then dip videos were so big. There was huge. So like, this is just kind of a, a memory that I have that I go back to sometimes because it was just such a different world. It was so it was, fun it back was, then. It was dude. different because people didn't have iPhones and. And like you could just scroll through TikTok and yeah. just see six. That like if back then, if you made a video and somebody watched it, it meant something. It did. So it did. it's not like it's not like seventy thousand people scrolled past my video. Yeah, it wasn't as easy. Yeah. And th there were so many people that that I would watch when I first started. Uh, one of them was named named uh, Grizzly Cope. Uh, Outlaw Dipper, uh, the guy who owned Mud Jug, the guy who made the the, the Mud Jug. Uh, it wasn't Outlaw Dipper. No, 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 no. It, it was, was uh, Mud Jug One. Mud Jug One. Name, that's but, it. But, yes. but he's got, he sold the company to some fucking weirdo who puts shit out now. I don't know who it is. But back in the day, it was this this group of of just redneck guys who would who would review chew videos and. And that's how I came into it, and I and I actually got a foot in it. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I had Mud Jug comment on my videos, and they're like, "Hey, this is funny." And I was like, "Okay, like we're going somewhere with this." And then time rolled on. Um, I bet I, I met the woman that I had a kid with. We had a child. Um, oh, things, that, <laughs> yeah, off a dip. Things kind of slowed down. We had a child. Um, we moved in. Uh, to a little um, studio apartment in, in uh, Carl Junction, Missouri, and uh, it just kind of stopped because I was I was a dad, I had a child, you know, yeah. so I couldn't couldn't put videos out every day. So it just kind of stopped, and it stopped for about ten years. For about ten years there, I wasn't making videos, but when when I was making dip review videos, you know, Copenhagen Man, they got popular. There was stickers everywhere on the fucking school buses. You go to you go to school in the bus, and there'd be a, a Copenhagen man of sticker. And Kurt got was in a class where he could print off shit. What's it called? Graphic design. Yeah, yeah. So Kirk was in that class, so he he he'd print out fucking stickers. Oh fuck and, yeah! And then they'd stick them everywhere, all over the football field, all that shit. And it just it just kind of died out. And then uh, I'd say about two thousand. 17 i said you know what i was working for my dad doing construction uh i, I went i went to college i was a, a fireman went to went through fireman i went through the uh fire academy um went through emt school medical school and i was a fireman for about four or five years and 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 that was fun it was good and i met so many great people being a fireman so many great dudes dudes that would just fucking whip ass right now mm -hmm. i mean dudes that would just i went to fires they with, straight just they, they i mean they just, slay dragons just, for a uh, literally i mean literally <laughs> i mean just dudes who we got in situations with uh car wrecks fires whatever it may be yeah. dudes that i went out with that were just there just so there just just badasses. I mean, really, uh, the Marines of uh, of your hometown, and and I did that for a long time. I was a fireman in EMT for four years. You know, it's really weird that that that, that you know that you say that is because I'm I'm from a smaller town myself. I mean, it's half the population of Joplin. Um, you know, being a being a fireman, it's almost like you got kudos. No, it is kudos for being like, hey, man, <laughs> yeah. You're the fucking guy. Yeah, you're, you're the guy. Our, our population was like twenty six thousand, and I'm yeah. like, you're the guy. Okay, but like, even if you're a volunteer, they're like, hey man, we appreciate you. Oh yeah. And I'm just like, whoa. Oh yeah. Now you know, cause like my my uncle Kirk used to be a, I don't think he was a volunteer. He was an actual fire fireman himself. Yeah. And you know he had um, other complications, and he passed away unfortunately, but. 
you know, I, you know, things like that, you know, like my grandpa used to be, he was, he was in the Navy, he used to be a park policeman, like I've had so many people that have been in, in, in the first responder industry, right, right, and I'm just like, damn, like I, well, there, I want to do that just to like pay respects to them, and right. I'm like, but like some of the stories I hear, I, I, I hear it's like, oh, that's fucking terrible, that's a lot. That's a lot. I want to do that. It's a lot. (laughs) Uh, When I showed up to the fire academy in 2015, I believe it was right at the beginning of the year, and I thought it was just going to be like normal. You know what I'm saying? Well, it wasn't fucking normal. Like you've got see what you got when you when it comes to firemen. Mm -hmm. So what you have is retired uh, army, marines, navy fucking retired cops and yeah. and they're trying to find something because here's the deal when i w- first went to the fire academy um and did my first ride along i was with uh, an ex-cop who was just coming in to be a fireman and uh it was funny because we're i was sitting in the back of the rescue truck and we're just driving around going to get something to eat and he goes man this is really nice and and my chief at the time was like what's nice and, and he's like well when i was a cop everybody i passed by would Flip me off. And now that I'm in a fire truck, everybody waves at me. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> everybody loved it, man. And I, 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 dude, I had an uncle who's been a, a, a fireman. And I don't know if you've ever met Chris, but God damn it, I wish you could. Uh, Chris is a great guy. And he's been a fireman for 30 years in, in the town in Web City. And uh, there ha- it's, it's not every Christmas, but every other for Christmases, he'll do a little bit of extra activities, and I can't talk about it on the podcast. But you know, <laughs> when, when 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 you take off things and, and oh, you ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But w- when I was in the fire academy, they're like, "Who do you want to go do ride along with?" And I was like, "Oh, my uncle Chris, you know, Web City Fire Department." And I I went down there with him, and the very first call, like I was like, "Okay, we're here on on the ride along." I've never been on an emergency call in my life. Yeah. So the the one comes in, and it's a medical call, and they're like, okay, here we go. And everybody's like, fuck is running. I didn't think everybody would run. (laughs) But everybody ran. What do I do? No, yeah, I was like, I was like, what do I do? So they're like, the call comes in over the loud speakers, right? The the, the speakers are loud as fuck. And like, I fucking, I get in the truck with the chief. Right, and I'm yeah. like, dude, my ass hurts. I'm like, there's something under my ass all the way to this call. Like, I'm trying to set up. Like, I'm setting on something, and I was so nervous that by the time we got out of the truck, I was setting on a clipboard. <laughs> what is this fucking dude, it, to do? It was one of those hard metal clipboards, but uh, just I fucking set on it, and he he started laughing, and it was just like you know somebody having chest pains or something. But you know it. It's a good time, and I, I got done with that. And by the end of it, I, I was probably a year and a half, two years in, and I just I was like, I want to go back to telling jokes. I want to go back to making videos. I want it because that's what I love. I love making videos, and I just love that weird feeling of just people watching my videos. I, I enjoy doing it. So once I retired from from being a fireman and all that, I. I went back to making videos, and um, we went from there. I, I I brought it back. I started making videos, and and people were like, "Oh my God, it's a Copenhagen Bandit!" So the name stuck. So the name stuck, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And then, I, I, probably about two years in, I made the the band that finds a Twigger's backpack video. Yeah, got sixteen million views on Facebook. And ever since then, we've just been, just been dousing them. And you know, the thing is, is I, I, I get under pressure sometimes. I'm like, you know, what video am I making? How should I make it? But I just go. I just run with it. I just, yeah. I, just, I mean, you know, when it comes to like pressure and shit like that, like, dude, we're all human beings. You know, mm-hmm. everyone's gonna have a writer's block or. Everyone's going right. to have these issues like, what if this, what if that? I mean, how many times have I messaged you, Brian? And I've been like, hey, like is this okay? Yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah, like, yeah. fuck it, I'll board it. I'm like, if I have like nine beers, I'm like, fuck it. 
Yeah, I'm like, pull it up, pull it. I'm like, is this good, Brandon? Like, should I post this? And and, and like, I just, I get, you know, I get weird with that shit, man, because I want to give the best that I have, but you know, I, you know, I try my hardest. So, but it's been fun. It, yeah. it hasn't yeah. been uh, anything different yet. <laughs> what else we got, Brandon? Hey, we'll go two hours, bro. Hey, dude. Fuck. So like. <laughs> This is something I've been waiting to ask. You been waiting to ask this one? <laughs> yeah. You been waiting? Yeah, oh, I've been waiting. How long have you been waiting? About 10 minutes. Meow. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, let's see if I gotta crack something. Nope. Do cracker elbows or your knees, I bro? Can't. Like when we're on the road and you crack your air- <laughs> elbows. Oh, you drive for like four hours? Yeah. So I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes we'll be driving and you just bro, crack your fucking wrist. I can like, feel you looking at me. You're just like, yeah. I'm like, what was that? I've never met somebody. <laughs> I've never met somebody who can just crack their fucking wrist. Dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't ask about it. I don't know what that was. Put it in the videos. I don't <sighs> care. Hey, uh, so. D- <laughs> so uh, what, you been waiting? <laughs> patiently. Uh, want to talk about females. Oh, we're talking about Things females. we can't have. Okay. We're talking about females? Yeah, we might as well be. Uh, Women that we can't have because we're fat? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we might as well like wainers and well, like yeah. each other type of thing. No, that's fine. Drop it on me. You might want to take a swig. All right. What's your ideal uh, take? What's your ideal um, woman specimen? What What's the main thing? <laughs> what, what's the thing? Oh, wait, I got a specimen. Okay, hang on. What's the thing that comes to mind when you're like ideal woman? Okay, ideal woman. I'm thinking blonde hair, little thicker. You know, I don't not skinny, many, little thicker. Um, good attitude, uh, funny, like not retarded. F- yeah. Oh like, well, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> not special. <laughs> like uh, no like offense. like you know, just like nice and and likes to hang out. Um, I have family that's on the spectrum. It's okay. Like if I want to go to Hooters or or hang out with the boys, it's not a huge deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you know, like you're you're the boss dog. Um, but I like you know a thick waist, uh, pretty face, small waist, thick. You know, <coughs> you know, yeah. Shit like that. Um, but uh, yeah, just I don't really have a type. I just just be nice, you know. Don't be crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. Most of the men, women you meet nowadays are. Psycho. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, oh my God, did you go yeah. like, oh, Hold on. Did you breathe there, you piece of shit? Yeah, so it's like just, you know, blonde hair, <laughs> skinny waist, um, big ass butt. Um, that's kind of my, that's kind of my gal. Um, that's, a, that's just kind of my type. What about you, Brandon? Because I mean, there's been a few times on the road you've been like, hey, look at that. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's yeah, a lot of thick. You yeah, like yeah, thick, yeah, bro. Yeah, I do, I do. Um, so like, uh, we'll just cut it to the chase here. Um, <clears throat> as long as you get a little bit of a personality, um, you can be a little bit of a bubble. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I like that. I like a little bit of cushion for the pushing. You know, I'm all about it. Um, but really, I'm all about the personality. Zen time. As long as you don't look like you chew on rocks or anything. (laughs) You're talking about no teeth? Eat like sand or, um, you know, like stuff like that. Hang on, eat sand? Yeah, like, you know, if you're out in the playground trying to be somebody that you're not, like, Mm. you know what I mean? Or like if you're trying to, like, make up stories about things that aren't real, it's like, okay, like, you're a problem. You know, like, I'm pretty out there. 
pretty out there. I like. I mean, uh, you like them all. They're ground tall and small. Yeah, you know I do. Yeah, man. You know. Um, I mean, you're the kind of guy, Brandon, that like. Yeah. I just you're the kind of guy that just needs a good girl. With a good personality. I do. You know what I'm saying? And that's understanding about what I do in my life. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're going on the road. We're going to go hang out. You know, like, come back. You know, nobody's getting fucked. A little, like, bit, of, a little just, bit of de stress when I come back home. A little bump smuggly. Right. You know, yeah. Whatever. A little bit of fucking spooning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we ain't yeah. out on the road doing nothing wild. You know, we're, we're fucking looking at chicks with You want to go watch Race Car Babe? Yeah. That's a thing. Dude. I'm like That's fucking married. Like these women who don't want to go to the racetrack, mm. it's game over. You know what I'm saying? It's game I over. About like dude at one point. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I thought about out there. I'm telling Which you this. Is no, hey, there's no disrespect. No, there's that. no disrespect at all. I thought about being gay. I just don't know if I'd like it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I could so just, at one point or two. It's just not for me, but. Well, like in Wichita when we went to that gay. Dude, bar, gay people are so. It fun. was so much fun. God, they're so fun. They'd fucking lick the salt off our shot glasses. I'd still take that shot. No, it was great. I mean, we went to the gay bar, and they were like, hey. They're, they're, um, they're so you, welcoming. Yeah, they were great. They're like, hey, you guys here, you want to do want a shot of? I'm like, a they're shot like, of We're going to get these bro. boys. They're like, like oh, we're going to get these boys fucked up. Yeah, they're like, and me they and did. him are about to get married. I'm like, they're like yeah. we're going to figure out who they really are, and they did. Like, wow. You was on the stage uh, doing karaoke. karaoke. Was I? Yeah, you were. I don't That's remember doing that. Ever seen you sing karaoke? I was fucked you up. You were singing YMCA. And the funny part was, was you were singing YMCA and no one was behind you. You know what's weird is, like, I don't remember that at all. So, like, I can't tell if Bandit's, like, actually made a bit about that or if that's a true story. Because I got really fucked up at that bar. I don't remember. <laughs> Brain's ready to go to the YMCA. Dude, I'm about ready to test it right now. No fuck with me, alright? What do we got next, Brain? Dude, so I've always been wanting to ask you about this shit. You know, we already talked about like where it all started all of a sudden. I think, God, this shit's burning my life. Dude, it's a lot. It's a Zen's are a lot. It's a little Zen's spicy. will fucking have you up and going. It's a little spicy. Like, if you think you can't do the day, just take a uh, Zen, bro, and you'll be like, oh, I'm ready to conquer it. Uh, Zen's fucking getting you there, dude. You know, I, w- I went to the post office the other day and sent out 49 t-shirts mm-hmm. on three Zen's. <laughs> Zen's are the way to go. <laughs> Was that burp a lot? It was. It almost got, like, frothy, but it was just a lot of air. Mm. We got it under control. But anyways... Hey, man, so I've got, like, 9,000 things written down here. I don't give a fuck I'm written down, you know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> words. We're getting pretty hard. What's next? <laughs> I'll tell you what's next. Hey, man, so this is something I want to ask you about. We'll fucking talk about it early. So, like, we're from polar opposite sides. So I'm from way up north, yeah. and you're from a little bit further down south. You're from Missouri, uh-huh. and your family, your family's from Louisiana. Uh-huh. So, like, we talk about it all the time in these videos. I guess when I get pretty drunk, we don't eat polar I, sausage. I'll tell you that. If I get drunk, I get drunk enough, and I get mad. My northern accent starts coming. Oh out. yeah, dude. is you that true? Is no, that true? no, it's absolutely true. Like everything's normal, like you're a normal guy, and then you get upset and you're like, "Fucking Canada! <laughs> fucking Canada! I'm fucking from up north, god damn it! Ah, oh, god damn, you been over to fucking Canada?" And then I go over to your dad's <sighs> house, these chain smoking Marlboros. I watch your dad light one cigarette with the other, bro. He pulled out. What else to do? Yeah. What else to do but drink and smoke more, bro? Yeah, what the fuck? You smoke fucking cigarettes and eat fucking liver? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. When I'm in a bad state of mind, I go over to your dad's house, and then when he takes that drag off that cigarette, dude, I'll say something to him. I'll, I'll explain the problem, and he'll say. And when he exhales, I know I'm about to fucking get 
the best information oh. I've ever fucking had. And you're going to remember it even if you're drunk or not, dude. I mean, fuck. As soon as that Marlboro bro blows out, it's fucking game on. Oh, I can't keep these in for long. We, we was at Hooters. We was at Hooters. He said, you going to be a fucking bitch? Mm. Or are we going to go party? I remember that. We were staying up the fucking lot. Then we went and partied. He gave you a pep talk. It was said, good. Listen. It was good. I'm glad I didn't have to snatch me up by the neck like he no said. One. He said, are you going to fucking straighten up? <laughs> are we going to go fucking drink beer? And be fucking mad. Uh, drink beer at the lodge. Like fucking boys. How old are we? Men. I mean, we're members of the lodge, bro. Oh, we are. Yeah. That's for like 50 year olds. When we go yeah. in there, we're like the youngest that are there. You know, mom will tell you if, if, if mom watches the podcast or dad, they'll tell you that I got an old soul. I'm all about it, man. You know, all my friends before I moved down here, they're all older folks. Dude, like neighbor, my neighbors and stuff, like I learned a lot. You know, I'll tell you what. Well, once once we start dipping into like the boomers and like, okay, it gets a little weird. But like, anybody that was in their like late forties, fifties, early sixties, like, man, I'll fucking tell you a thing or two. <laughs> like, dude, so, when I was your age, I had to fucking cut off. Oh yeah, I'm like, and God, fish, just I got so in. drunk, I pissed myself. <laughs> I think you fuck. I just kept bringing one. Is it true? I heard. I heard back in the eighteen hundreds that if you were taller than the bar up in Wisconsin or Illinois, that you could drink. I would. I wouldn't fucking doubt it because <laughs> I don't know if it's still law. But if you are with a parent, it doesn't. It can't be a legal guardian. It has to be an actual parent. You drink at eighteen. Mm. Okay, well, that's not. You can. You can do that's that. That's better than down here. You, you know, in Missouri, if you're under six with a parent, you can smoke meth. That's terrible. I, no, it's absolutely terrible. Listen, God, I remember that's, one that's year. fucking terrible. I remember one year on I Christmas. I drink beer. I get it from my family. I just like drink beer. One year on Christmas, Brandon, one of my cousins, they got an easy bake oven. Mm-hmm. And most kids would, like, try to, like, make the cookies in it. Mm. My cousins tried to cook amphetamines on it. <laughs> they did. They went in there, got their mom's fucking baking soda, and they put a little bit of that ad leave fucking sleep well in it. They tried to cook that shit up. <laughs> what? That's not a lie. What it tastes like? I don't know. I didn't try it. I don't know either. I don't want to. <laughs> but you know. Wow, dude, that fucking Zen hit me hard. That it is. It's a lot. That Zen's a lot. It's leave, a lot of nicotine. I can leave it in for like a minute. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, that Zen's a lot, bro. I make mean, kind of feel. Bro, it kind of like makes I, you feel. I can feel like I can float. It does feel like you can float. Like when you watch podcasts, like Joe Rogan will be like always offering somebody a Zen, and like, dude, I've been chewing Grizzly for thirteen years. You put a Zen in. It's fucking game over. It you makes me fucking buzz a little bit. 